tech support. But this summer, it just happens that all of us are ITSs, and so we are integration specialists as well. So as you are working with your um, groups and your grade levels, and you're having difficulty t looking at the IPGs and, and creating an engaging Seesaw lesson, please reach out to us because that is our specialty. All right, so let's go to the next one. So we're going to begin with a Pear Deck activity. Um, if you guys will go to, and I'm going to actually have this, these directions on my little sticky if I can find it. Um, I'm going to put something in the chat. You're gonna open up a code or you can do this on another device. And you're gonna go to joinpd.com. And again, I'm putting this in uh, the chat. So open another tab or on another device like your phone. You're gonna go to joinpd.com or you can just click on the, on the link that I put in the chat and you're gonna enter the code IWMWN. And I think at this point, now that I found my share screen, um, Kathy, uh, will you stop sharing so that I can share? You got it. Thank you, Thank my you. dear. You're welcome. If I get the right one, hold on. Um, where's my pear deck? Oh no, where's my pear deck? I think it's that one. Okay, so um, this pear deck presentation. Do you want to stop sharing your screen? No. This Pear Deck presentation is in student paced mode. And do you guys see my teacher dashboard right now? I hope. Yes, Kathy, do you yeah. see my teacher yeah. dashboard? Yeah. Okay, good. So the very first question in Pear Deck is uh, place a check next to the five areas to master when transitioning to distance learning. And so many of you are already um, submitting your results. You're just dragging the check over to the ones, the five uh, pillars that we talked about in our two hour distance training last week. So what are those five pillars? Pop quiz. And if anyone puts I station, I will be very, very angry. <laughs> like my nemesis. <laughs> okay, so I see a lot of people. That's awesome. When I'm in my teacher dashboard, I can look at the results in real time. Um, I can do an overlaid layout view if I click on this little button. It says I have 17 responses. And this one is kind of messy because I can't really see the checks. Um, so I'm going to go into the individual view where I see, I should see, each person's individual results. So here, um, let me go to someone. Rachel, I'm picking on you. I'm so sorry, but it looks like you have the correct answer. So congratulations. SEL and relationship building, practice student development, utilize your curriculum in a digital space, organize and deliver content, and assessment, very good. So Pear Deck is a really engaging way for you guys to get some feedback, um, you know, formative um, or summative uh, assessment. So that's a really great tool. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the presentation. Come on. All right. If you did not get into the Pear Deck, don't, uh, don't worry about it. Um, we're not going to do another activity until the very end. All right. So um, these are the five areas of distance blended learning that we were talking about. And um, scroll this over here. Hold on just a minute. And so, yes, last week we had the Department of Instructional Technology provide this two-hour course. 
Um, so now we, we remember what those areas are. But today's presentation is um, all of the features within Seesaw seamlessly integrate with all of these areas. So as you are creating your digital space for students, just make sure there's a component in your instruction that includes these best practices. So if you're having difficulty integrating these components, just reach out to one of your summer school ITSs and we can certainly help you. I'm not quite sure what our hours are going to be. Um, we are only hired part-time, so we work four hours, not the full um, hour, seven hours that you guys do. So um, I'm not quite sure what that's going to look like. We will figure it out this week and then we will let you know. All right, so, um, your summer school IPGs may or may not provide seesaw lessons. So we just wanted to walk you through the anatomy of a seesaw activity. Now this right here is um, click is linked to a presentation that Kathy and I are actually offering. And I want to say it's this Thursday. Kathy, is it tomorrow, Thursday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Okay. So this is a couple of learning boards. And um let me admit. Okay. And it, it is a wonderful, wonderful presentation. And Kathy pretty much does about 90% of it. And she's really, really good at explaining kind of the pedagogy behind designing these lessons. So if you go into a non-published activity, like you want to create a lesson from, from scratch, you're going to see these different spaces. And these different spaces are really important. And you need to know the functionality of each. So the very first one is kind of obvious. It's the title of your activity, but you want to include not only like the, the um, lesson objective, but also like the date it is due. So parents and students can clearly understand when this assignment should be, be completed. You have a space for written directions. So you can just type in directions for your students step-by-step. Step. You also um, in this class, offer tomorrow, we'll get a link to the little codes where um, you publish these instructions and it puts the icons in place of the words. And so that's really good for our littles that are struggling readers. You also want to take advantage of add voice instructions. So, um, you know, again, a lot of our students are um, non-readers. And so by by adding voice instructions on what the expectations are, not only do they get a chance just to hear you, but they get that additional support. The add multimedia instructions or example part, that is the really, really important part. Um, that is where your direct teaches. And so this class really focuses on this part. So students do this first, and then they have to demonstrate understanding by doing whatever activity that you have added right here, which is your independent practice. And that's where you add the template for student responses. So that's kind of an anatomy of a Seesaw lesson, just in a nutshell. Again, we have additional information for you in tomorrow's, um, uh, in tomorrow's class, if you would like to learn more. So sometimes um, if you are having difficulty bridging the content to Seesaw, we provided a link to this little walkthrough that might help you. So when distance learning first started, I literally took this kindergarten math lesson and I did kind of a think aloud by inserting comments into the different parts that I thought would, would go perfectly into a seesaw lesson. And it's just really talking um, your way through creating activities. It's, it's I don't, I'm not quite sure why the, okay, there we go. There's the comments. So um, as a specialist, when I looked at this for the very first time, um, it was difficult for me because I was like, okay, how do I take a lot of these um, uh, materials, a lot of these links, which are PDFs, and how do I make them interactive so that students are demonstrating understanding of a concept so that I can know where I need to reteach or step in with modifications. So um, this kind of walks you through just the thinking behind it where you go from the IPG into um, a seesaw lesson. But again, you do have a, a instructional technology specialist as your tech troubleshooter. So please reach out to us um, if you have any questions about that. 
Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over to Kathy, who is going to show you some examples of these seesaw lessons. And again, you will get this presentation at the very end. So Kathy, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, All right, well, we had just had a great question come up in the chat. Um, someone asked, can we just, you know, assign activities that we find in the library and the you know, Seesaw was really developed for the use of uh, when you're physically in the classroom teaching um, and for students to demonstrate their understanding. And so the act, most of the activities that you're going to find in the instructional planning guides or um, in the Seesaw Activity Library were really designed to be utilized in that manner. However, like Laura said, the, the activity format is really set up beautifully for you to add um, instructional content for distance learning, which is what you guys are, are essentially going to be needing to do here for summer school. So we want to talk a little bit about what, how do we do that? How do we add the instructional pieces? So as you're looking at activities, of course, you want to look at your learning target and make sure that you're delivering content focused on that learning target and then an opportunity for students to practice and apply with that learning content within the, all within the Seesaw activity. So there's a couple different ways that we can add that instructional content or instructional pieces to um, the uh, activities that you're finding to, that you want to use. So the first one is to utilize curriculum resources. So when I say utilize curriculum resources, that can be done in a variety of ways. So you can pull in you know, PDFs, uh, Google slide decks, uh, PowerPoints, anything that you can download or link you can pull in. So we've got an example here. Whoops, that didn't work. Sorry about that. Um, we've got an example here of uh, where we took a go math lesson, or Laura took a go math lesson, I should say, and um, added, that, added that as the multimedia um, portion of the lesson. So again, that the multimedia section is where your direct teaching is going to go. So we added the go math lesson here to teach the content. And then in the student template, she's added um, what she pulled right off of the instructional planning guide for students to practice and demonstrate the concept. So, you know, you can grab that content, like I said, by pulling it in from Drive, downloading it, or taking a snip and adding that in. Um, but we're, we had, we're kind of packaging instruction with the content um, to teach and then the ability to practice. So, like I said, you've got a variety of ways to do that with the, with the creative tools available in Seesaw, but you just want to make sure you park that instructional piece there in the multimedia section. Another great idea that we shared last week during the uh, distance learning frameworks is to utilize um, screencasting software to kind of package content as well. So we can, with screencasting software, we can use uh, web content uh, essentially to kind of set up a, a teaching area, just like we would on our smart boards where we would stand at the board and teach. We can do that same concept with screencasting. Uh, with most of the programs too, you can just record yourself um, or you can record the screen. So I'm gonna show you an example just to kind of get your wheels turning. So this is uh, the, what you see here on the multimedia section is a really cool uh, website called the Math Learning Center. They offer all sorts of virtual math manipulatives. And with this, um, I was able to kind of set up my teaching uh, canvas and actually teach a lesson. So once I set it up, I began screen recording. And so you can see me down here in the right, lower right corner, and I'm moving the manipulate, moving the, um, the little counters around and explaining a concept. Um, with the Math Learning Center, I've got the manipulatives. I've also got tools for annotation, math symbols, all that good stuff. So I'm actually teaching my lesson kind of like I would on the smart board, but I'm doing it through screencasting. So really quick and easy to use. So again, the multimedia portion, and then down here is where the students are going to demonstrate and apply that content. So a um, couple of suggestions for screencasting is uh, you have Screencast-O-Matic available in the Software Center. Um, there are also programs like Loom and Screencastify, which are out there as well that you can utilize, but it's really much quicker and easier than you would uh, think that it would be. So we can utilize those curriculum resources. We can record lessons and teach content. We also, um, Laura mentioned the clickable learning boards. And uh, again, we're presenting this session, I believe 9, 9.30ish tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the choices they get. Right. So the idea, the idea behind a clickable learning board is right now when we are dropping links in that multimedia section, of the activity where we want to put that teach piece. Right now we only have the ability to offer one link to students. 
And so the idea for clickable learning boards was kind of born from that. And it's a way for us to package a little bit more content to deliver to students. So this, uh, what you're seeing was basically created in a Google slide. We took snips of the different places that we wanted to drive kids to. And then each image is linked to take us to that content. So um, I can start off with the students reading a book um, about money. So I'm wanting my lesson, I'm wanting them to learn about the names of the coins and their values. Um, so we'll, I think we're gonna give you access to all of these resources in the slide deck and, and materials, but this is a great site called Unite for Literacy that reads the books aloud to students and it can be delivered in Spanish, English, or a combination of the two. But it's basically allowing me to take the students through a lesson flow. So I've got a book about money. I'm gonna drive them to a video about the names of the coins and their values a game uh, which can be used to practice matching the coins in their, in their names. And then I parked my Screencastify lesson. And again, this is from the Math Learning Center. It's called the Money Pieces app. Um, and I screencasted a lesson there. So I'm able to just deliver a little bit more meat um, in my lesson portion. And again, the student template is where the students are gonna practice and apply the concepts that I was teaching. So I'm gonna have them matching and uh, the coins and their, and their values there. So just a couple of ideas, um, you know, and, and to kind of just package a little bit more instruction into those activities. Any, Laura, anything you want to add before we hop on to the next one? Um, no, huh? Okay. I promised them that we would get them out exactly at, at 1130. So I'm looking at the time. <laughs> okay. All right. So cool. we're going to keep rolling. So the other thing that I would say to you as you're getting ready to start planning your um, lesson delivery and how you're going to utilize Seesaw is also to really vary your content. So we, you know, there's a time and place for like, you know, go math handouts and things like that, but we really want kids engaged. So we really want to make sure that we're giving kids a variety of ways to interact with content in Seesaw. So a couple of ideas are, you know, plugging in virtual field trips. So I have a space one linked here, but if you uh, take a look in the Seesaw Activity Library. People have been putting tons of them up there. Um, so that's another way. And then when you're uh, creating activities, giving students opportunities to actually interact and move things around. So for example, this one, they're actually moving cubes um, to uh, work with making a 10. Um, this is a phonics one I ha actually came across and I was pretty uh, the letters are all movable. So the students are going to be dragging sounds and to build words, stretching, stretching the words out. So they're actually just moving things, not just annotating. And then finally, um, you know, this one is like a scratch and read. The kids are gonna use kind of the erase tool to scratch the little color off the back of the pig and then read the CVC words. So it, that's one of the beauties of Seesaw is that we can, there's so many ways for kids to interact with content. And so as we're building activities or, you, or finding activities, we wanna make sure that we're looking for a variety. It's not just, listen to this lesson and, you know, fill in this worksheet. Um, we would really want the content to be more dynamic and engaging. And then, you know, you had kids can respond to activities using any of the creative tools available in Seesaw. So maybe you have something where you don't even need to set up a template where you can have kids draw to respond or add pictures to respond. So, you know, just keep that variety so kid, you maintain the engagement and kids are excited to come and interact with the content. All right, that was a lot of information. I'm gonna turn it over to Laura to talk a little bit about strategies. Yeah, and do you wanna stop sharing? Sure. So are you guys looking at? We gotcha, I can see your screen. Slide. You can see it? Okay, excellent. All right, well, one of um, the major concerns for both parents and students over the last couple of months has been confusion about when assignments are due. Um, so Kathy talked to you about creating those assignments, but how do you make sure you have a workflow that is working for both parents and students? Um, so that was a real struggle for um, every, everyone in this past two months. I have three examples here of something that you can do. Now, do you, do you have to do these three? No. If you found something that was really, really successful over the past two months and you want to continue that workflow process, absolutely do that. But if you were struggling with this, here's just a couple of ideas. So the first one, example number one, is using a calendar posted on your Seesaw blog. 
So I'm not quite sure if a lot of you know this, but when you have a Seesaw journal, by default, um, the blog is not activated. You have to go into your settings and um, look for the little blog feature and then cl click on the toggle button to activate it. But all I did was I posted this to my blog and it is actually a Google slide. So if you click on view Google doc, this is a template that you guys will be uh, getting in just a minute because I'm gonna put it in the chat. If this is something you would like to use, absolutely go for it. Um, I just made a quick little um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, boxes and then maybe contact information about how parents or, and students can contact you. Maybe you put a link to your, Zoom, your daily Zoom meetings. Um, here's announcements for the week. And then if you have additional links for enrichment activities, you can put them right here. So I have a slide. Um, so here is like the week of June 1st through the 5th. Here's um, the next week, 8th through the 12th. So I already have those dates put on there. All you have to do is um, like maybe assign a seesaw activity here on Monday, but then say that that same activity is due on Wednesday. So they have, you know, two days to complete that activity. Whatever works for you is fine. This is just one example of something that you can do. So again, by posting this to the blog, you would be sharing this link up here with your uh, parents and students. Um, and this takes them to the assignments for the week. So that's just one example. Okay, example number two is just using a Google slide that replicates a website. Now remember, you're getting a link to this presentation and this takes you to a Google folder full of different templates that you can use. And, and really most of them are from slidesmania.com. It's a wonderful website. And she creates really cute, cute um, Google slide presentations. But when distance learning started, uh, she did a lot of um, distance learning type calendar activities. And so here's one that I created kind of with a Northeast theme. And if you don't like creating a website or you just don't want to use your Seesaw blog, this is really cool because all it is um, it's, and it's already linked for you. You just have to put in the content, but it opens up as a Google slide. Any minute now, you'll see the slides. But when you go into present mode, it actually looks like a website, but it's not. It's just a Google slide. Any minute. Okay, looking at the questions, it says um, additional links would be great for the librarian lessons on Zoom. That's awesome. Can it be edited? Absolutely. Uh, great question. Okay, so it finally came up and now you can see that if I'm in presentation mode, it is actually, it looks like a website. You can change um, the little um, bubble right here. You've got links to Monday. So this is where you can have your message of the day. And what's really cool is because these are Google Slides, you have the ability to insert audio. You can insert video. Um, so if, uh, if you wanna put your morning announcements right here, you can certainly do that. If you don't have four activities that you wanna share, you can uh, just delete some of these buttons and just do like two, a link uh, to two activities. And then you can add, add your instructions for the day right here. So there's um, a page for each day of the week and then just a link to um, all of the archived weeks if they wanna go back. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of presentation mode. And once again, I'm back to a Google slide. Very easy. Now, if you wanna get really fancy pantsy, and, and here's, here's the one thing that we really want you guys to take away. And that is, um, you know, you're doing this for summer school and you have what, four weeks, five weeks ish. Um, but what are you going to do for next year? Think about that. You know, these, um, you guys are kind of like the, the uh, guinea pigs or the, you know, pilot piloting this distance learning program. We have no idea what's going to happen in August if we're still going to be in this virtual environment. But we need to start thinking about creating a digital space 
just like we, we would um, our physical classroom in um, on campus. So if you want to get all fancy pantsy and create a website, this is um, a really cool kinder teacher uh, named Ben Cogswell. Not quite sure where he's from, but he created uh, just a Google site and he has a different page. So this is going to be your parent corner. So maybe you embed video tutorials about how they log into Seesaw on a Chromebook and, or how they log into Seesaw on an iPad, depending on what kind of device. Um, troubleshooting tips right here. He also has his daily schedule. You, you see that he's bilingual, so he has everything in Spanish too. So this is just an example. If you are a Google site user, um, he also, this is where he delivers content as well. So that's a really cool idea for strategies to keep students of what is due and when. Um, naming scheme for classes. So when you create these Seesaw activities, again, you want to be very mindful that you are clearly communicating what week it is due. And then maybe down in your directions where you record your voice, you can even say click on the check to turn in your work by Friday, June 12th. You know, so you could have it up here, you could have it here, but you need to have it posted somewhere. So in the chat feature right now, what I want you guys to do, and if you haven't already done so, if you'll take um, your cursor and uh, kind of hover over the bottom, you'll see your Zoom toolbar and you'll see the chat button. If you click on it, then you can um, open up the chat. And I want you to share how you've been communicating assignment dates over the past two months. And let's go ahead and share some ideas. It says Rachel, it says you can publish, you can generate the published link or presentation mode link and post that to. They were asking Laura about how do they get that link into Seesaw and uh, we were talking about pulling it in versus Drive versus sharing the published link. So it opened up in the, in the presentation mode. Yes. For families. Yes. So if that is something that you are interested in doing, we probably don't have time to go in and model but I want you to, um, as a grade level, when you guys when you guys are planning today, I want you to write down the things that you need for your ITS model for you, and that is what we um, are going to do um, aside from the initial tech support. So I see a lot of Class Dojo, awesome. I see a lot of Seesaw. Again, Seesaw is. Um, you know, we're paying for it. So we have a lot of that functionality that didn't come with a free version. So communicating with parents is always important. I see uh, we had a weekly calendar in Google Classroom. Um, I sent the plans through announcements. I'm assuming in Seesaw, very good. Um, remind. So yeah, what if you're using something um, that worked for you, absolutely continue that. Uh, we would like to see grade level consistency maybe next year. I know that I was in a meeting with um, our campus principal for Stuby Ranch and she, and she said, mentioned that, you know, it doesn't, um, she's not requiring for every grade level to be consistent and that's fine, absolutely fine. Um, just, you know, share ideas of what works because um, some teachers are really struggling with this and other teachers have really figured it out and we need to get the word out. So. I like um, a lot of the things that I'm reading in the chat. I think those are wonderful ideas. And um, Kathy, uh, do you want to take over or do you sure. want me to just share and click for you? Uh, you could just share and uh, I don't think there's any clickables really, but you can, you no. can drive and I'll talk if that's cool. Okay, cool. All right, so lots of good questions coming up in the chat. We're gonna kind of move through the rest of the lesson and then if we have time at the end, we can open up and answer some of the questions to make sure you guys are empowered and ready to move forward. So um, I do wanna talk with you a little bit about connecting parents. So I, I did see, like Laura said, a lot of people using Dojo and Remind and that's fantastic. Um, Seesaw does have a, uh, you know, the whole, whole messaging feature included in it as well. Um, so I just wanna mention that before I dive in. So. You guys are receiving new kids um, that you know may or may not even be from your campuses. So one of the advantages to Seesaw is because we are a Seesaw for Schools district, if the students have had parents connected, um, they're going to continue to have parents connected. We don't have to take any additional steps. 
to get families connected if they already were. So the first thing you probably want to do once you get your class, uh, summer school class populated is to go in to see who already has families connected. So to do that, you're going to go into your Seesaw class and go to your little wrench in the upper right. And you'll go down to the family section um, and then manage families and you'll see a list of who's already connected and then who needs to be, who else you need to reach out and get connected. Um, to connect your families, you can go um, to the lower right of, in your Seesaw teacher account. Um, at the bottom, you'll see a little tab that says students and families in the bottom lower right corner. If you click on families, you're gonna find a variety of ways to connect families. So you can go the old route and print QR codes and send those home. But you also have the ability now to just enter a family's text uh, cell phone number and or email, and it will send them automatically a text message or email that says your teacher would like you to connect. And really it's as simple as the, as the parent clicking and, and um, accepting that invite. So we really do want uh, families to be connected in the, in the family app so they can see what's going on. And because that's the way uh, they're gonna be seeing what's happening with the students, seeing their work and receiving those announcements from you as the teacher. So check, check who's connected first and then go in and do your invites. Um, I think that's about it, Laura, on that one. Yeah, we have um, a lot of people asking the same question, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and say it out loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your seesaw classes will be populated by skyward um, i just checked for steubing ranch and they were not there yet so i think um i think skyward is still being populated that has to um happen first and i'm hoping that your 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 uh, classes will just magically appear by end of today or maybe tomorrow so i will check and, and uh, let everyone know yeah the last communication we saw laura was that at nine o'clock tonight um, existing classes, the classes you just came out of, will be uh, archived, and then the uh, the process of populating those summer school classes will begin. So it should be relatively quick once that happens. Yeah, and and I know that it syncs every night at midnight to update, so we shall see. Yep, but check who check who's connected first because you may already have a lot of families that are connected when you when you uh, get that class populated for you. So we talked about getting those families connected so you can have those communication pieces and let them know what's coming and what's happening. Um, we also wanna make sure that we're connecting our uh, principals and librarians to our classes so they can see what's going on as well. So to do this, um, you can do this all by yourself. Again, you're gonna go to your wrench in your Seesaw to access your class settings. Um, when you get to the wrench, you're gonna go down to the teacher section you will click manage teachers and then you will add them as a co-teacher with their email. Um, so you can add many multiple different teachers onto your uh, Seesaw class. So if you've got SPED support that you're working with, um, you, you know, want to have your librarian connected. And then if you, uh, I guess they're recommending Laura that we connect our principals to our classes as well. Yes, and just remember that your campus ITS, um, your summer school campus ITS, is the admin for the Seesaw dashboard. So um, they would be the ones that you would contact if you have, have any problems. Are they going to be getting, like, when kids turn in work and things like that, if they're the co-teachers? That's a really good question. So... Each teacher is in charge of their notification levels in Seesaw. And so if uh, by chance you have a librarian or principal that you connected and they're like, I'm getting a thousand emails. What you wanna do is in, again, in your Seesaw class, you're gonna go to a different place to manage your notifications. So you're gonna, in the very upper left, when you're in your Seesaw class, you're gonna see your profile icon. It has your name and probably your picture. You click there and go to account settings and there you can modify how you want to be notified. So you, you might want to, you know, turn off email notifications and just get SMS notifications, but you each teacher can go in and uh, make those adjustments to what works for them. Awesome. Good question. Yes. Very good question. All right. So these are your um, summer contact and support team from, uh, the ITS or instructional technology, um, Sarah Sepulveda is going to be at Wincrest. And these are just links to the Google um, summer school sites. Um, that's her email address. Um, I will be uh, the ITS for Steubing Ranch. There's my email address. 
Jessica Winston will be for Northern Hills and Maria Garcia Rios is going to be the ITS for Larkspur. Now, like I said, we are part-time only and I don't know when, what our hours, hours are yet. I think we're going after we um, hear a little bit more and you guys start planning and you um, communicate those needs to us. I think that's when we're going to determine when our hours are. Um, from now until Wednesday, we are officially still in the ITS hours, and so it's all day. So it's going to be from 8 to 4.30 for today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Starting on Thursday, that's when we start our four-hour um, workday. Okay. And now we're going to go back into the Pear Deck activity. So if you still have your Pear Deck presentation open. I'm going to go into um, my teacher view. You have two more slides. The next slide is um, what would you like more support in learning about? So would it be creating quality seesaw activities to deliver content? Would it be creating calendars to organize your due dates and info? Would it be connecting others to my Seesaw class or working with my ITS to learn other things for distance learning? Now, again, today we're just focusing on Seesaw, but you have a lot of tools at your disposal. So um, as I go through, I can see how you're moving those stars and it looks pretty consistent. A lot of people are saying creating quality Seesaw activities to deliver content, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend the, the, our class tomorrow. It's, it's really, really good. We've got a lot of good feedback. Um, there is another question. And that is, what is your plus one takeaway? Um, Catherine, do you want to talk about that? Your plus Absolutely. one takeaway? Absolutely. So we gave you guys a lot of information in a really short period today. And you may be feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed and I have to start teaching really soon. So um, I, I kind of work and live on a, by this professional, you know, I can't get good at everything at once. So I always encourage people just choose one thing. So when we ask, what is your plus one, you know, in everything that you've heard today, I'd like you to set a goal. What is your plus one? And when I say plus one, that means one, just pick one thing that you're going to work at getting good at and you're going to learn about it, try it, practice it. And then when you get good at it, then you pick a new plus one. And that's how we continue to grow as educators. So I see you guys starting to populate your plus ones. Um, trying to make my screen as big as I can because my eyes yeah. don't do that well anymore. <laughs> creating a, a calendar Google slide. My takeaway is creating a calendar with links to help plan and organize lessons. Guys, seriously, if, if, there, if you can just provide one link and give it to students and parents and say, just click this link to to um, disseminate all of your information. They are going to be very appreciative. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, look at all these responses. Connecting with families via Seesaw, creating a calendar. So now you kind of have, it, have in mind your needs. This is where you need to uh, remember this and reach out to your summer school campus ITS so that we can help you. All right. Now I think we had some questions come up. If we have some time to kind of open up and ask yeah. questions, um, Kathy, will you start answering the questions? And I am going to be putting a copy, um, a link into this presentation. It is when you click on it, it's going to force you to make a copy. So you're going to have a copy of all of these great examples and the the link to the the template folder that i um showed you guys earlier so kathy go ahead and do that while i get this um okay. so the chat was going really quickly i'm going to address uh one of the ones that i saw come up and then maybe we can have, have you guys unmute and ask questions moving forward so someone had asked about the seesaw blog um so see the nice uh addition to seesaw is the blog feature so again, like Laura mentioned, you do have to go to the wrench and enable the blog and that will walk you through a process of naming it. Um, you can choose to password protect it or not. Now, when, it, when we talk about what the purpose of the blog is, it is actually a public facing website. So anything that you post on the blog is publicly available. Now you can password protect the blog. So if you're gonna, that's gonna be uh, the way that you're gonna communicate with parents. You can share the blog address and the password and that will eliminate other people from seeing it. So it is a forward-facing website. All the work has pretty much been done for you. 
with a seesaw blog though, everything that goes on the blog has to begin in seesaw. So anything you've posted into seesaw um, underneath where you have the like and comment feature, there's a little globe there. And once your blog is enabled to move things to the blog, you just click that little globe and say, yes, publish to the blog. So um, it's a good, it's, you know, if you don't have the time to invest in building a website, that might be a good option for you. There's also a, a lot of huge potential with a blog that you can connect to other classes and, um, and allow students to get in there and see each other's work because right now when they're working on the class app, they can't see each other's work. But when you move them to the blog and share that blog address with your students, they can look at each other's work and comment and give feedback. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, what other questions? Um, for the link that I sent, and I'm going to send it one more time. For the link that I sent, you have to be logged into your NEISD Google account. Sometimes if you're accidentally logged into your like personal Gmail account, um, it, it will um, ask you to, to uh, request access. But I want you to notice the URL that's in the chat. Instead of the very last word being slash edit, all I did was I changed that word to slash copy. And when you do, um, when students click on it or, or anyone, it forces them to make a copy. So this is what, am I sharing my screen or are you doing it? Uh, you're sharing. Okay, do y'all see this? Uh, we just see the thank you screen right now. Okay, well, I slid over and it's not showing it. Okay, so it just says copy document. Would you like to copy would you like to make a copy of Seamless Summer with Seesaw? You just click on make a copy and it puts it in your own um, NEISD Google Drive, okay? Maybe. So again, if it's asking you for request access, make sure you're logged into NEISD. And I see a lot of people saying it's not working. So let me go in and change permissions to everyone with the link. Thank you guys for your patience. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Whoops. Change it, change it. While she's getting that set up, do you, do we have any other questions you'd like to unmute and ask? Okay, try it now, guys. I'm so sorry. To force everyone to make a copy, how did you do that? So when you create a Google slide presentation, it gives you a URL. Actually, when you go into your share settings, it gives you the URL. So when you copy the link, okay, and I put it in um, my browser, you'll notice that um, it says edit and then whatever, blah, 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 blah. If you delete this, and change the word edit to copy. Then, oops, if I, if I type correctly, change the word to copy and then share this URL link with your students, then it forces Perfect. them Thank you. to make a copy. But you have to do what I didn't do and that was um, change the settings to anyone either with any ISD or you can op open it to anyone with the link. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay, cool. I have a quick question. When you're using Pear Deck, I would like to use it with second grade. Would they need a second device or do you recommend Pear Deck for second grade? I do. I do recommend Pear Deck. Um, one thing, uh, first, of, first of all, it's going to be difficult to get every, uh, uh, all the kids a second device. Um, Correct. You can say, you know, go use your mom's phone or something because we know that, that all parents have phones, right? So you could say, use your phone and log into the Pear Deck and just do the Pear Deck presentation on your phone. But here's the dealio. They probably have never done Pear Deck before. So you're really going to have to take the time to kind of share your screen and show, show them how to toggle between Zoom and um, uh, the browser, how to go to joinpd.com, and then how to interact with the Pear Deck. So... Um, I don't think I would do it with Kinder. Um, I was suggesting in our two hour presentations last week that you go through and, te and actually teach your kids in person. If we ever do go back to a face-to-face -face environment, you know, mm -hmm. do all of this training with your kids, 
before you try to do it in a distance environment. So at least they know how to navigate and use the tool. But that really is kind of going to be, be up to you. I know that um, there's been several teachers that have had a hard time doing this. So I can imagine Kinder first and second. <laughs> can they access Pear Deck on our Launchpad? I thought I saw Yes, it. Maybe. there is. Okay. There is a Pear Deck link on Launchpad. Correct. So that so would. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we, when we tell them to, they don't have to go to pd.com, they can just go to Launchpad and click on the Pear Deck, yes? Yes, that would be a way of them not having to type in the URL, correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And yes, Alicia, it can be difficult to toggle back and forth with iPads. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you Since can... Send those in uh, student pace mode as well. I don't know if you mentioned, I know you modeled it for us, but you could yeah. assign, assign the Pear Deck as a link and student pace mode to your students as well. Exactly, exactly. I like the student pace mode um, just because um, it gives them more time to think about, you know, each question, so. And then you can you can always um, share your results the next time you have a Zoom meeting if you want to share. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I opened it up in copy mode and it's only showing me slide one. Try it it's, it's, it's on there. Wait for it to populate. Because okay, is that what it's doing? Okay. Yeah, yeah it might have showed up like that too, but it's slowly loading. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> On tomorrow's um, web webinars tomorrow, there's no passwords. Is that going to be a problem tomorrow? We are uh, not sure yet, but we're going to fix it. <laughs> yes, okay. we will double check after today's like, oh my gosh. Uh, we will And also sure. the number of participants because that was a well, problem too. Right, that, that's only a problem for CNI. All of the ITSs have paid accounts, and so we don't have that problem. It's just curriculum and instruction. They have the free accounts. Oh, I capped them out and wouldn't let everybody in. Is that what? Yes, that yes. Everybody was calling Amanda. Yeah. She I was capped them like, at a hundred. <laughs> she was going nuts, oh man. And Good all of thing. these tomorrow. She was trying so hard. All of these tomorrow are for K through fifth. They're not like specific to grade levels. Is that correct? Um. So, tomorrow's webinars. Well, I'm looking at the schedule right now. It says kinder and second, and from 9 to 9.45, I see clickable learning boards, distance learning, Pear Deck. You know, you have some choices. If I go to third through fifth on June 2nd, it's the same one. So, yeah, it looks like it's going to be K through five. But remember, these are all ITSs that are presenting, so we shouldn't have that problem with um, being kept out. Okay. All right, guys, it is 1130 and I'm sure that you are starving. We will hang out for a few more minutes if you would like to ask um, some more questions, but feel free to leave and enjoy your lunch. And thank you guys for being so patient with our technical difficulties. Um, this is the first time we've ever done. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Do we have to sign up for the class or the professional development in Eduphoria so we can get credit? I think we're providing credit by, um, like when, when we create the class, um, it gives us a roster and we're turning that roster in. Okay, sounds good. So, so it's not through Jephoria, it's through Zoom. Okay, perfect. I think. Okay, yes. well I wasn't able to get into the last Zoom meeting, so I don't know if that's how you guys are doing it since some people weren't able to get in. Right, we're working on that right now with curriculum instruction. Hopefully we'll have it solved tomorrow. But like I said, okay. if it's an ITS presenting, we don't have that problem. I have a question. Um, yeah, I really, really depend on uh, Class Dojo for my yeah. communication with parents. Yes. And so with distance learning, really getting to know Seesaw, um, I've seen, you know, I, you can make announcements and that kind of thing. Can you just totally replace Class Dojo with Seesaw mm -hmm. as far yeah. as can yeah. communicate? Oh, like, okay. can you schedule announcements and that kind of thing also or no? Kathy, I don't think you can schedule. Can, um, can you? 
currently, no, but that is a highly uh, sought after feature. So my bet is you're going to see that rolling out relatively soon. Yeah. Okay. I love Class Dojo, but I'm like, man, doing all these amazing things on Seesaw, it'd be perfect to just mm -hmm. use Seesaw, you know? But Just using one platform is so much easier on the part of the parent. And right. right. I, I, I love Seesaw, and uh, I did work in Seesaw, so that would be great if I can work on Seesaw, you know what I mean? So yeah. thank you. Okay, cool. Cool. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending. <laughs> Laura, I have a question. Yeah. yeah what's um, up? So, um, I, of course, was assigned to come to this one, but would really love to hear the Google Classroom session that just happened. Uh -huh. uh, since I'll be supporting them as well. So, yes. do you know if there's a way for me to get a link to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are, th we are recording them, and I'm not quite sure where they're going to be. They might might be on that summer school schedule PD that you guys got the link from the Zoom. We okay. might drop the recorded webinar link in that same place. I'm okay. not sure, that, though. But, yes, we'll share it with you. Okay, thanks, Laura. Sure. I, I got a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, are, we allow, can, are we allowed to use the uh, activities that are already in season, or do we really – or we have to create all of them? Or can we use some of them? The already created lessons in Seesaw, absolutely. If, if it meets the learning target of what, you know, the same learning target is on your, on your IPG, absolutely. Yeah, because I already created some with them right now. And so, and I'm doing kinders. So I would like to use them again. And also sure. I saw a lot, of, a lot of activities about plants and we're going to be covered plants. So, I mean, if I can just use them. And absolutely. Actually, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. and share it, share them with your team too. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyone else have a question? Yeah, I had a, I had a question. This yeah, probably doesn't apply to everybody, but uh, I'm a counselor, and we didn't. I didn't use Seesaw, and uh, so when I tried to get in, I couldn't um, get an account. Do I go in as a teacher, or how do I do that? Because I hadn't even started at all. So, what campus are you supporting? Uh, I'm at Coker. We are at Northern Hills. Okay, so um, your Northern Hills ITS is Jessica Winston, I think. Winston. Okay. If, yeah, if you will email her and just um, ask her if she can add you to okay. the Seesaw dashboard, um, maybe as an admin, then you can see. Okay. Now, if you want to communicate with parents, you would probably have to be like a co-teacher in some of the teachers' classrooms and communicate that way if you want to do it through Seesaw. That's okay. What we did with most of the counselors at the campuses I support is once the Jessica adds you into the dashboard, then the teachers can add you as a co-teacher on their class, so you're able to message families and students. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That with sounds that. cool. Just a little bit of setup, but then it's going to be easy peasy moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be I similar to me since Sorry. I'm at Madison High School during the school year, but I'm going to be at Wincrest? Uh-huh. Okay. Say it one more time. What is your question? Would that be similar for me since I'm usually at Madison High School during the year, but I'm at Wincrest because at Madison we weren't using Seesaw? Um, well, you're going to be populated into the summer school um, uh, the summer school uh, seesaw class. Okay. And you should get an email invitation. If you don't get an email invitation, then contact your campus ITS. Okay. And what they can add you manually. Yeah. Okay. Are you, Thank Elizabeth, you. are you going in as a teacher for summer school? Yes. Daily teacher. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, wrong, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, uh, that was just talking. My baby just graduated from Madison this morning. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I sure awesome. wish it was a real one, but it was very different, but still go Madison. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Go Mavs. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody else had a question. I did. Yeah. Um, right. So a lot of the pre-created seesaw activities, and I just wanted to know this as a standpoint for copyright and things like that. If they're available in the library and in our district library, there's an option where you can copy it and edit it to meet your needs. Is that okay to do as long as everybody shared it? Yes, absolutely. The beauty of Seesaw is the sharing. Like anything that's been contributed, you, there's an understanding that you can take it, modify it, use it. To I just 
I just wanted to make sure because that's what I've been yeah. doing because there's a lot of them. You could just add a, you know, screencastify part and you're set. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And that's okay. really what we and want you guys to do and take the lesson, build on top of it for, you know, to add the instructional piece. Probably about 80% of all the lessons that I create start from someone else's lesson. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty yeah. of Seesaw. It's like, wow, I can just add a couple things here and it's good to go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Question. Yeah, I, I have a question about the, uh, the pair deck. Um, I got lost in, in going there and doing the... Uh, like the, the four choices, mm -hmm. which, which thing, I, 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 I've I been trying to find out how to get there and I can't. Can you I can, yeah, I can. I'm going to send the, the link again in the chat. Do you have your chat open? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna send the link. It is in, um, uh, it is in um, self-paced mode. So when you open this, you will have to use the arrows in the bottom. Uh, I think it's the bottom left corner to navigate to the slides that you missed. But there's the link and there's the code to enter. Yeah, it's asking me for a code. Mm hmm I put it in there. It is I-W-M-W-N. Here it is right there. I don't know why my computer is being so slow. I love the blog. I clicked in there, typed my class name, but now it's asking me for a URL. Oh, um, I don't want to. I don't want to botch your name up. Um, can I answer her question about the blog real quick? Oh yeah, yeah. So you're going to be able to all seesaw blog addresses yeah. start with the same uh, same beginning URL, but you get to customize the end of the URL. So when it's asking you for that, you can put in uh, you know whatever. Miss Howard's class or Mr. Howard's class, however you want to do it, um, and then it'll tell you if that's a if that one if that blog address has already been used before. So you're just customizing the end of the URL. Hopefully that answers your question. And also, um, this is the ITS uh, distance learning website. If you go up to webinars, man, this is slow. And then you go to recorded webinars. We actually have a webinar that Kathy and I did on blogs, on Seesaw blogs. So it's down here somewhere. So hopefully that will help. But again, contact your, camp, your campus, uh, summer school campus ITS. And we'll walk you through it. So here's connecting students with Seesaw blogs. Yeah, connecting students through Seesaw blogs. That's it. All right, who else has a question? Um, yes, uh, I, I just put this, I'm sorry, I'm very slow, but uh, I did the star in one of the four choices and then what else do I do? Just nothing? Just just leave it there? Um, I'm sorry, say it one more time, please. Yeah, I'm on the pair deck. I already got there and then I chose one of the four things that you were saying about okay. more supported in learning about. Okay, and I now go to the next one. Yeah, and then then do I have to click any done button or anything? Mm -hmm. No, on the on the last one, if it's um, you're typing in your question, you're going to click on mm -hmm. add another response, and when you click on add another response, it sends it to me. But you don't have to add another response if you don't want. Oh, okay, so that's it. Uh -huh. That's it. That. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I don't know why. Resume share. Any other I'm questions? Out. Whoops. Are you seeing my scary hairless cat? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no cat. <laughs> I don't want to scare people with my hairless cat. I think should I do tomorrow for kinder? I would do Pear Deck if I was second for kinder. So Rachel, my friend, uh, we're going to do, we are offering in the morning tomorrow a yes. assessment for, uh, quality assessment for K through two, that would probably be good for you. And then the clickable, have you, you've already done the clickable learning boards, right? Sorry, I'll unmute. <laughs> um, I, 
I think we all have to go to the authentic assessment, but I did the clickable learning boards and the, um, the ambassador one. Oh, with Chris. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't remember. I mean, I'm fine with doing it again because I want to know about the, the Google slide that replicates a website. Like that's kind of, I mean, I. Yeah, that's in your presentation that we did today. So you would, that template is already made. Like all you have to do is go in and add your content on each um, slide. So where do all I of, find all that? It is on slide number. Let me move on. Oh, I just click it on this thing. Okay. Yeah. So when you go okay. to. Um, no, this, I get it now. I think. <laughs> it is on this slide. Go to example number two because that's where all the the templates are, and that's where I put the template um, okay. the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What else, guys? Thank you, Arma. Okay, Catherine, just to let you know, I stopped uh, recording. Okay. It didn't ask me where to record, so I don't know if it's recording um, in the cloud I, or not. 